Hey everybody, this is Joe from Greenlight Sound and greenlightsound.com. And today I'd like to go over a video sort of geared toward beginners, but also just to give you a little bit of insight into my workflow when I get brand new files and uh, a brand new project. So one of the cool things, first of all, you see in front of me the um, on your screen the blank Studio One project page. No tracks imported yet. So one of the cool things about Studio One is that it's drag and drop functionality. So I could go to any file browser and just drop tracks right in that way. But built within the program, you also have this file browser, which is sort of convenient for a couple of reasons. First, all the tracks are laid out right in front of you. And second of all, you can work with stereo files in a certain way, which I'll show you in a moment. But first of all, if you're a mix engineer, one of the things you might want to request from your clients is that you get your tracks when delivered to you, well labeled. These are, they're numbered, they're in a great order, they're um, labeled as well with what the sound is. Sometimes you'll get tracks that are just track one, track two, track three, track four, track five, and so on, and you have to sort of go through each one, solo it up, see what the sound is, label it yourself, and it's a lot of time added to your workflow. So well-labeled tracks and having tracks that'll start at the same time and are in sync time-wise are two big things you might want to request if you are a mix engineer. Second thing, you'll notice that over here in the audio files, track one left, track one right. These files were sent as multiple mono files. So what I did within Studio One is select both of those multiple mono files within the file browser here, right click and choose merge to stereo file right here. So you'll see the third choice below for track one that is already merged into the left and right into one stereo track. So what I can do then is go through each of these tracks, select the ones I want, and then import them in. So here's track one, track two stereo, track three, track four, five is mono, six, seven is stereo, eight is stereo, nine is stereo. Okay, so there, I got them all selected, leaving out the multiple mono files and just keeping the stereo ones, and I just drag it right over here. And it'll populate that. And as it adds all those tracks in, you'll see a couple things happen. First, it adds them down in the mixer channel here, and you will also see them, there they are, they populate in the wave files up here. And it says building preview over here on the left hand side, you'll slowly see each wave file start to come in as the program processes all that new material that was added in. Okay, so now that we have all of our tracks imported, as it's building its preview, I'll show you how to sort of organize these, organize the tracks. First, all the percussion tracks, all the drum tracks were all put in the same area, which is great. So the first thing I'm going to do is choose all of those percussion tracks. That's from track number one all the way down to where I see bass here. Then change their color. It can be any color you like, but as long as they're the same color, that helps keep everything organized. There we go. Previews built for all those. Good. So all the drum tracks are labeled, or sorry, are, are organized into one color. Then right down at the bottom here, you'll see some percussion tracks. We may label them a different color later as we route them out to somewhere else. But for now, just think percussion drums all in the same place. Okay, down here we have a bass track. I'll give that a different color, sort of a light blue. Acoustic guitars, DI tracks, amp tracks. These are all guitars, so amp, amp, DI, DI. And I'm finding it all the way down right here. It looks like our guitar tracks. Label them all the same color. Now, number 46 here. I don't know what track this is exactly. You can look over my file browser. It's a pad. Okay. So these two... I'm going to leave sort of a yellowish color there, synth tracks. Lead vocal track, set a color there. Vocal doubles, harmonies, background parts. Now these wahoos, I'm not sure what they are, so I'm going to listen. Uh -oh. There we go. They are vocal tracks as well. Harmony, harmony, harmony. Great, so all those are background vocal tracks. Leave them sort of a purplish color. So now all the tracks are organized here. I see all my drum tracks, one color, and in the mixer faders down here, they're all that same color. They reflect what you have up here. Um, bass track, one color. All the guitar tracks, one color. Synths, one. Lead vocal, one. Background vocals, another. So helps keep things well organized. This is a, um, a reference track down here, which I'll, I'll keep a red label on, red color on. So then what I'd like to do is get all of my kick tracks, which is 
the first five, okay? They're all highlighted down here now. What I'm gonna do is hit, I made myself a shortcut, option B, which created bus for those. And I'm gonna call that kick master. And that allows me to get all of these routed to the same track so I can have my processing for all the kick tracks on the same track and sculpt my kick sound there. If I take that same process for the snares, all those, Option B, and I have a snare master track. The rest of these are percussion, so what I'm gonna do is now click my kick master, command, hit my snare master, get the rest of these included here, and create another bus for that, which I will call all drums. And that's a master track where all of these uh, kicks, snares, and hi-hats, and so on get routed to. Give that a color. It doesn't matter what. I pick green. Then I go over to the acoustic guitar tracks here. Pass the bass track. Click all of these guitar tracks. Hit option B, or I could right-click and choose it as well, and hit all guitars. These two are synth tracks. Option B, all synth. And click all my vocal tracks. Option B, all vocals. Okay, so now I have buses for each of my different sets of instruments that I have. I got an all vocals, I'll click and highlight that. And all synth, all guitars. all drums. Bass is separate. I kind of leave that one out. And sometimes if I have multiple bass tracks, I'll put its own bus for that. Sometimes I'll send this to a track that's all music or all instruments. But for now, I'm going to leave that one out. So then what I want to do is hit option B with all those highlighted. Again, I have my all drums, my all, um, my bass, all guitars, all synth and all vocals. So all my tracks, option B, and that gets us to the submix. There it is. Highlight the submix red. Great. So everything's routed now the way I like it. So I have my my drums all going to that drum bus with my two sub buses for my snare and kick so I can process them easily. All my guitars going to the same bus. All my synths and vocals going to the same bus. And all those then fed into the submix or sub master channel, whatever, whatever you want to call that. You can call that any number mix bus any number of words you want to use for what you call that. Um, and once I get those all organized, then I feel like I can start the process of balancing a little bit. And that'll be in another video. But just wanted to give you guys a quick, I guess, rundown of how I import all the tracks in, how I manage those stereo files, and how I get everything organized before I even start mixing. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.